Welcome back to Sailing Sertia. This week's video marks one year since we found and paid, bought and paid for Sertia. Um, and our lives changed so dramatically. I still get quite emotional at the thought of it. The thought of how much hard work's gone into this <laughs> bad boy. Yeah. Um, so the start of the story is I think everybody knows we lived in Belito, we sold up everything, we were staying in Jeffreys Bay when we heard we had come through to Cape Town to look for yachts. Uh, we weren't finding anything on the internet, we thought we would walk some of the docks and just see if there were any for sale signs. And whilst doing that, somebody mentioned to us that there was somebody selling a catamaran that was on the hard in Langabarn. It was in somebody's garden. That was all he could tell us. I don't know what it was from that very first instant, it was a case of we've got to find this boat. Ridiculous as it seems, we decided the only thing we could do was to go Google Earth um, Langabarn because we thought a catamaran is big. If we go into Google Earth, Langabarn's not a huge, huge place and if we just grid search... It's a very tiny little town. Yeah, it's quite a small little town. It's quite spread out when we got to Google Earthing it. but. We thought, well, we'll just grid search Google Earth until we can find a house with a yacht in the garden and take it from there, which is genuinely what we did. We pulled up Google Earth and we started grid searching. And we did it for probably an hour. Of, we really blew it up. And as, as you know, when you blow up Google Earth, it gets very pixelated. And we were struggling, but we went through. And eventually Robin said to me, oh, this is not going to work. Let's try and figure out another way to do it. And I said, no, just a few more looks, and there I found it. It didn't look like a catamaran. It was just two white triangles in the front garden of a house. And we thought, ah, oh, maybe that's it. So we zeroed in on the coordinates, got in the car, and we drove to Langabarn and found those coordinates. Coordinates, And that's where we found Susha. So we'll actually show you. You can see Langabarn all along the coastline. Yeah, absolutely. Pan you across. So this is Langabarn Bay Lagoon. Beautiful place. And that's pretty much the whole of Langabarn. So up. There is where we found Sersha. So we drove through and found her sitting in the driveway of a house that was all closed up and it was a Sunday afternoon if I recall and it was like oh have the people just gone out for a drive or to me it looked like a holiday home it was all closed up in such a way that it looked like a holiday home so I wrote a note and I put it under the door saying I believe your boat is for sale we are really interested in knowing more about it please give me a call and I left the phone number and we were about to leave and I thought it's so oh, still not enough let's let's scout around with the neighbors and see if we can find out who the owner is and we did um, there weren't a lot of neighbors around down the road and around the corner I found a guy who said oh I didn't even know that boat existed he had been living there for a couple of years and didn't know the boat was there but said he thought he knew somebody who would be able to help us um, and long story short we also heard that the house that the yacht was parked at was for sale so then we thought okay well, if we google the estate agents we will find um, the house so we did that found the estate agent phoned the estate agent and said look strange request we're not interested in the house but we are interested in the yacht are you able to give us the owner's details and she did so that's the story of how we found the previous owner of Sersha um, and from there it's been a bit of a roller coaster so by the time we found the previous owner we had left Cape Town and gone back to Jeffreys Bay um, and did some negotiating over the phone, came up with a figure that he was happy with, that we thought we would be able to finish, be in our budget enough to finish the boat. Um, and we got in the car and shot back about 10 days later to sign for her. It's quite a drive. Yeah, it's about an eight hour drive, so it was, it was quite a, a trip. It's not just a weekend trip out. Yes, yeah. And we stayed in a camping site and spent as much time with at Sersha as we could knowing that we had to go back to Jeffreys Bay again to pack up everything to move here finally which we did a month later so and in that time Colvin and I had gotten engaged the year prior in December and ah, this was going to be a long engagement <laughs> we were told no wedding plans 
anytime soon. We'll probably get married in the Bahamas or the Caribbean. Yeah. So I'd really put a wedding right to the back of my mind. And the night we left Jeffreys Bay to move back to Sersha, you can imagine the stress and have we done the right thing and knowing the huge project we had taken on ahead of us and Tegan phones me and says, guess what mom, we've decided we want to get married in two months time. <laughs> Did my head in. We were scared we would get the yacht done in two months. <laughs> <laughs> thought we were heading on out so Tom and I decided we wanted family and friends. We initially decided on an island wedding um, but we wanted family and friends from Belito to be part of our day so we did decide very quickly that we wanted to get married at home and this was now a push to get the yacht in the water before that. So my reaction when she initially told us she was getting married, wanted to get married wasn't great. Which resulted in about a week of total silence from her. She wouldn't talk to me, but at the time we just had we we're trying to get wrap our head around the enormity of the job we had just taken on. And then to throw the wedding into the mix was gonna be something else. But she assured me that she would take on all the planning so that we could just concentrate on the boat. So we decided to go with that route. She was happy to do that. I was sad that we were going to miss a big part of the planning, but we had two projects on the go, so that's how we moved forward. And there was a huge rush to get the yacht in the water before the wedding, because yeah. why did we need to rush? Well, initially it wasn't. We were going to put the yacht in the water after the wedding, um, and then the, the property that we the boat was at needed to be sold and obviously a great big yacht in the front driveway wasn't helping matters with the marketing so we decided it was only fair to get moving out of there as quickly as possible so the first three we moved the boat at the end of middle of October um, and we bought in June we came back here in July so between Ju July and October we we really had to she was a long way from being water ready um, so we really put in a lot of work Chris again did came in around I think it was about September to to start commissioning the engines. In the meantime, Robin and I had been working on mostly carpentry work because that was pretty much all we had expertise to do. So we were getting the boat tidied up, put in order. We had also bought a garage full of equipment um, and parts for the boat. When we bought the boat there was a lot of equipment and stuff that Robin and I had to go through and see what we had, decide what we needed to still buy. Um, so those first three months, like I say, mostly putting in all the portholes and the hatches, the painting of a lot of the timber work on the bed structures in the cabins, um, getting a lot of the teak veneer put in place. Cool. We just worked on those portals. Yeah, that was all put in. But those first three months was literally, it was still, it was going into summertime, so we had very long days, and we worked from, we were out of bed by 6.30 in the morning and going to bed at 10, 11 o'clock at night. So those first couple of day, months was crazy. Um, then Chris moved in and it was even crazier. And somehow we managed to have the boat water ready about 10 days before the wedding. So. Then the boat was, we organized the transport. It had to be transported on a huge truck with um, traffic police to escort us. We felt quite important. And it was such an exciting time, nerve wracking. Robin, Took out a few street signs. Yeah, Robin said he never ever wants to do anything like that again. It was just far too much for his nerves. I was more excited than nervous, but Robin was on fall apart stage, I think, at the thought of the, cat, the boat being hauled up into mid air and then put onto a trailer and transported. I think it was about, 28 kilometers to Saldana where she was put on the hard for a few hours literally and then went straight into the water. The next day uh, we stayed on the boat that night which was really great that was our first night ever on the boat on the water. It was still at just Robin and I at this stage um, and then Chris and Emil came in the following day and put up the mast and the rigging a good part of it. Um, and then it was time to cross the bay. So the bay that we see here, we came right from that far side of it. We had no sails at this stage, so it was all by motor. And came across through um, into the harbour there. So very exciting times. 
then how long was it before you had to do for Belito? Yeah, we were only here about 10 days and then it was pack up everything and head back to Belito. We wanted to be there about a week to 10 days before the wedding so that I could at least be involved in final dress fittings and getting everything ready for the reception. Tegan and had bachelorette party. Ah, the bachelorette <laughs> party. Couldn't miss that. Um, and Tegan had pretty much done all the organizing so it was really just the final things. We had a couple of meltdowns for a, a, a couple of times but on the whole it was incredibly well planned. I look at this beautiful, smart, confident young woman sitting next to Colman, and I wonder how I got to be so lucky to be your dad. Tegan, you make mom and me so proud to have you as our daughter. Today, Tegan has joined hands with a wonderful man. Thank you, Colvin, for your kind heart, generous soul, absolute selflessness, and your willingness to put Tegan's well-being ahead of almost anything else. Thank you for always being willing to do what is right good and nurturing to her soul. Thank you for always doing that without ever having to be asked. And thank you for the respect, support and encouragement you show her in everything and anything she wants to do. We look forward to spending time with both of you in the yacht and trust that you will always have the fridge on board stock with fish. <laughs> it is now my duty and great pleasure to formally welcome Colvin into our family. And then we had the wedding, spent a lot of time with family and friends, which was lovely after we'd left Belito about a year prior to that. Um, so it was really nice to see everybody. A lot of people came in from far afield for the wedding. So we got to see a lot of friends that we hadn't seen for a very long time. The wedding went very, very well. It was the right shebang for yeah. saying goodbye to our hometown. Yeah. I'd also just like to say thank you to my parents for birthing me because oh. <laughs> you're so awesome <laughs> um no but just thank you for them for putting in all the effort and help with the wedding obviously colvin's family too it wouldn't have been possible without you guys so we had an amazing day looking over our footage for this video was lots of memories and yeah tears. we haven't looked at our videos so going over it again it was beautiful we had an amazing day so thank you uh, and then we actually, we were going to leave literally two days after the wedding to come back here, but we were so enjoying the time of relaxing because it was the first time in months and months that we weren't doing 12 hour days, 12, 16 hour days every single day of the week. Um, when we finish this project, I'm going to sit down with the calendar and try and work out the hours we've put into Saoirse because it's phenomenal, but an absolute labor of love. So we were enjoying the break. Tegan and Colvin had access to a beautiful home that had been given to them by a friend to house sit. to house sit the the dog which was our dog initially before we left Belito so we had a beautiful home and our wonderful Rocky to look after and we stayed on then we got back in the car and headed back here and it was like coming home it was so amazing we thought Belito would have been home but we whilst we were there we enjoyed it but we just couldn't wait to get back to the boat so right from the very beginning this boat has really just our souls and hearts and souls have gone into it. And from there, Colbin and I packed up our entire lives and joined them. So everybody's lives have been changed dramatically. Last yeah. yeah. There's been a lot going on. We put teak flooring in, yeah. did all the my dad did all the carpentry work, so all the cupboards oh, and not all. We're still all doing carpentry yeah. work. It's probably been the biggest part of the longest it's taken the longest of yeah. any of them. So in between carpentry work, my dad also fitted wires, all the electrical, the plumbing. Colbin and him really went to town with getting all 
of that fitted. During these months we got our bimney done, that was the biggest curse of I think 2020 before Corona, but we got it finished. We also took Sersha out for a spin for the first time. So we got our bimney done, we got our sails and we had our name and logo printed on the sails and stack pack by Tony Book from Book Signs. We also had our naming ceremony, which Tony Book also helped us with, the stickers on the side of Sersha with our name and logo, so we are forever grateful to have such beautiful stickers on the side of our yacht. We were then able to have an amazing naming ceremony with our friends that had come from far and wide. Colbert has been doing plumbing, Denver's been do oh, well, Denver Denver's joined like, us. Yeah. So after all that, Denver joined us in what month? Late March. Just before lockdown. So yeah. like mid-March he yeah. arrived. And he's been helping with painting and all the little bits and pieces. My mom has been doing what have you been falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> Dehydrating <laughs> herself by crying most of the time. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> Between um, stresses, hormones, and just trying to keep us all from killing each other, because you can imagine lockdown. Five, five of us living on a boat during it, lockdown. It's not a tiny boat by any stretch of the imagination, but we're working on it. So there's just stuff everywhere, and we're not doing one project at a time. We're working on twelve projects, so we've got stuff everywhere. We're trying to get along with each other and not kill each other. Very hard. Yeah, it has been. Zastrons are hard-headed folk. Um, yeah, so just trying to keep my head above water pretty much. <laughs> but I do do work. I'm, I'm a good organizer. You and Denver are like the two that run around doing everything behind everyone else. Yeah. Pretty much getting the jobs finished. Otherwise, yeah. so, it'd be half assed jobs everywhere. Yeah. But we slowly but surely getting there. Um, I think Robin is looking forward to seeing the end of this project. It has been, when I look back at the videos and things of when we bought the boat, Robin as well, when we sit together and we look back at it, we think, what were we thinking? What, why did we even, you know, we never even ever doubted this move. If we saw the boat, we wanted it, we paid for it, we moved on to it. We never questioned, can we do this? Which is probably just as well, because we, if we knew what we were getting into, I don't know that we would have taken on the project. But it's been a labor of love and it's it's been hard and long, long hours and I'll never, I can quite honestly say I would never take on a project like this again. I think it would be a lot different if we had the money to bring in teams to do the teak flooring. Yes, do but the, we've tried to do it all ourselves, other than what Chris has helped yeah, us with. Yeah, because obviously we're on a budget, we've exceeded the budget already, a lot. gone yeah. into our sailing fund, yeah. so we're trying to rein it in and just get as much done by ourselves. Yeah as we can so yeah um, but it really has become our home Robin is super happy here we, we both are there's been times when I've had little meltdowns and he said to me are you sure this is what you want to do and um, are you happy here and I cannot think of anywhere else I would rather be and besides as tough, the Caribbean <laughs> on the boat yeah <laughs> on the completed boat so the only way we're gonna get there is to power on and get it done so our end goal for end of July is yeah, so our new goal to get moving we it's very expensive to moor at Langebaum because it's such a beautiful place obviously and the convenience of being in a small town is great but it's been beautiful the mooring fees are extravagant so yeah. we're trying to find cheaper mooring well we had also never planned on being here this long but yeah. with lockdown again the whole corona saga we, we had been here a lot more months than we had expected to be out of here March yeah so and we're in June 
and still looking at another two months of work at least. So we are wanting to head over to Hart Bay, which is beautiful, but it's not this quaint little beautiful Greek islandy place. Yeah. So that's our next move. So we're working hard. Yeah. So we're we've... getting back into the swing of. We have really days. only decided about two weeks ago that July, end of July was cutoff date. We have to have as much as we can possibly get done here because it's going to be harder to work in Hart Bay. Here we've got the storage unit. Um, so our aim now is to work our guts out again and get far enough along to be able to move the boat to Hart Bay at the end of July. Yeah. And then we'll take it from there. We still would love to get the boat around to Durban. Um, we can't do a transatlantic crossing now until about November. Um, so we've got between end of July and November to play with and we just thought if we could get back to Durban where there's better weather. Um, it's a lot warmer in Durban. <laughs> a lot warmer. We were not built for the Cape Even winter. if it's raining in Durban. It's still warm. It's still warm. Um, yeah, so ideally we would like to do that but we have to have the boat. Tote. It's a it's a big trip, a trip from Cape Town to Durban. As anybody who sails knows, the South African coast is a bit nightmarish. So we just thought it would be a very good um, shakedown trip for the boat, test all our systems actually in transit. So, yep, Robin and I have found our happy spot in life. It's taken more than half our lifetimes to get there. We, we don't regret our move. We know it's going to still be tough going forward. Um, but we really are in our, we found our soul, good soul spot. Yeah. Um, and just Big looking calling. for our, yeah, this is our calling, I think. So, we will power on and hopefully in, by the end of the year, by Christmas, we're hoping to be in Rio. Or not necessarily no, Rio, but somewhere birthday. in Brazil. We, we're wanting to leave in early November. Um, the and Van Tegen have birthdays on the same day of the month, four years believe apart. it or not, four years apart. I don't know how and you guys <laughs> that, that But we are aiming at being somewhere near the equator for their birthday. So depending on weather windows, that, that's our aim right now, is to be somewhere around the equator on their birthdays, which would put us in St. Helena, well, St. Helena, the equator, and then we will be in South America by a little bit before Christmas. So that's something to look forward to. We're all very excited prospect of that being the case. Finally getting out of your Christmas in Brazil somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you for listening to our story and our one year anniversary. You're pretty much celebrating it with us. Um, so yeah, if you have watched this far and thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. If you are enjoying the videos, please give it a like. It ups our algorithm and obviously suggest our video to videos to new people so also put in some comments yeah. please we don't get a lot of comments we'd love more comments love to hear from um, you guys if you have any questions or want to tell us how to do something because yeah. we all like to tell people how to do stuff <laughs> um, suggestions are good leave it in the comments below and considering we are headed to south america in november if you've been there before and have some good ideas of islands and things that we need to be at let us know yeah, please, please in the next couple of weeks we want to start doing the behind the scenes planning for our trip it's still a month months away but i believe it takes forever so give us some ideas thank you again and if you're enjoying our videos click on the subscribe button below